Morning, sir. Morning, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Sir, you are coming from Raniket? Yes, sir. Uh, by bus? Right now, no, sir. Uh, I am staying here in Delhi. But otherwise, how do you come from Raniket? Sir, by train or by bus. The train is from? From Kartgodam. Kartgodam. Kartgodam, Raniket, how far? 80 kilometers. 80 kilometers. 80. Up to that place, by bus? Yes, or, or cab. Good roads? Uh, so, in rainy season, they get deteriorated. So, in rainy yeah. season, it gets difficult. You come by road, you pass through the Corbett National Park? No, sir. No. No need. Have you seen Corbett National Park? Uh, sir, actually, uh, my uh, Nani's place is there in Corbett only, in the fringes of Corbett. You have seen? Corbett is famous for what? So, for tigers and for deer also. It is the oldest uh, national park of India. And uh, it was uh, unfamous for previously for many years tiger there. Who was Corbett? Uh, sir, he was a naturalist. Uh, he was uh, a person who has keen interest in forests. He's a keen interest in forests and wildlife. He was a hunter. Uh, he was a hunter too, yes. He was a killer of tigers. Uh, perhaps, uh, I don't know sir, exactly. You have visited there? Sir? You have gone inside the park? Yes, sir. How many times? Sir, uh, one or two times. How did you get admission to Army Public School? Uh, sir, I wrote the entrance test when I was in class 5th. So I get through that. Okay, for the civilians, there is entrance test? Yes, sir, there are limited seats for civilians. And you have gone on youth delegation to Russia? Yes, sir. Tell me what was the objective and how did you find Russia? When it was? So it was in 2017. Uh, sir, actually, that was from your college. Yes, sir. IIT. The Ministry of Youth and Sports they uh, they selected us. Hmm. So through the ministry, we went there to attend the World Festival Youth uh, Youth and Students. Hmm. So it is a festival which uh, which uh, which started in uh, after the 1945 to uh, bring in the solidarity of the democratic nations. So it was the 19th festival. So it was a 12 day festival and there were programs ranging from discussions on various issues, uh, clim climatic issues, environmental issues, and then there were exhibitions for art and culture and there were sports event as well. So my experience was good. Uh, it was, uh, I uh, kind of explored the nearby regions also and I attended few lectures and also participated in a sports event. Okay. What was your research uh, fellowship, scholarship? Sir, from France. So it was a part of my internship. I went there uh, after the third year, after the completion of third year. And the project was to uh, plan the electric charging station infrastructure there. So my work basically was in geographical information system to prepare the geo database and uh, do the analysis uh, of uh, multi criteria decision making. Okay. Okay. See, in the last 15 20 years, Lot of changes have come in the way we live. Okay. And public also is aware of many issues now. Okay. Can you tell me what type of awareness has been generated in public over the last 10, 15 years? Four or five points. Oh, it's gonna take a few seconds. Yes. Transparency, accountability of the authorities, how the money is spent, public money is spent, by whom, who is accountable. Yes, sir, through RTI, these things are also there. What is the position of vaccination in our country now? It's corona. So, right now we have completed around 53 crore doses. So, 11, per, uh, 11 uh, around 11 to 12 crores, uh, com uh, both the doses have been completed. So it covers approximately 45% of adults with single doses and rest around 13% uh, both the doses. And 
active cases? So active cases is around uh, three point nine uh, lakh right now, approximately. Okay. And uh, various state governments have banned use of plastic. Banned or it's still yet to be banned. Uh, so currently, uh, today on itself, I read that the government is uh, phasing out single-use plastic from the next year, and they have set the graded target. For example, the plastic uh, with less than 50 microns, it has been banned, and now uh, the target is to ban. Uh, so, can you tell me single-use plastic where it's being used? Some five, six examples. Uh, so, firstly, the wrappers of the biscuit and the snacks that we use, and. Uh, so the other one is th these bottles, water bottles, and uh, third example. And, and example is packaging. So how it will be changing, like the biscuit wrappers and all. What they will be going doing? Because if they put uh, paper, there'll be fear of that moisture getting into those. Uh, so it is a difficult one because there is. Uh, Still, uh, alternatives not avail available which can be scaled to the extent uh, that plastic is being used right now. So, uh, perhaps they will use biopolymers to make uh, some kind of uh, wrapping material. Still, the research is going on. Taliban thing, how far they are approaching towards India? Uh, so, they have uh, almost uh, encircled uh, the, bo the boundary of Afghanistan, for example. Uh, uh, you know, they have covered two third of the uh, country, and uh, and so uh, soon uh, I think they will cover the whole. So our worries are increasing, or we are doing something. Uh, sir, we are engaging uh, through uh, through uh, platforms like SCO of one contact group, and also uh, with the help of other countries. Uh, like engaging with uh, Iran, Russia. Where are those negotiations going on? Okay. What will happen to Heart of Asia conference? Sir, which conference? Heart of Asia conference. Uh, sir, I have not read about it. Sir. Okay. Uh, Rani Kit, what are all the things it is famous for? Uh, so it is famous for tourism purpose. So there are uh, good orchards of apple. Uh, it is also famous for its. It hosts the uh, one of the largest regiment of uh, Indian Army, Kumau Regiment. Other thing, is, it is famous for uh, adventure and adventurous activities and for sightseeing. Okay. Uh, have you heard the disease called Ranikate disease and Ranikate disease virus? Uh, I'm not sure. There is a disease which affects poultry. Okay. Ranikate disease. Okay. Thank you. Is, uh, you have the lab near Ranikate, right? Mukteshwar. Yes. Sir. Virology lab. Have you heard of that? Mukteshwar virology lab? Mukteshwar, sir? Hmm. Yes, sir. How far Mukteshwar is from Ranikate? Uh, around 100 kilometers. Okay. Uh, tell me something about uh, India and France uh, relationship. Uh, so India and uh, French relationship is all time high. So we have uh, common engagements in, in uh, nuclear energy, in solar renewable energy. So further, there are more areas of convergence like maritime security in the Indian Ocean region. Further, there is collaboration on uh, science and technology. And uh, and uh, after the Brexit, Brexit uh, European Union uh, is also looking to negotiate BTIA, uh, bilateral trade and uh, investment agreement. What are the major irritations or uh, frictions, friction points or pain points in uh, BTIA? Uh, so there are a few list of commodities uh, to uh, which uh, I mean, for example, there uh, Europe wants to export the commercial vehicles uh, or the personal vehicles as well as wine, but India has reservation and it ha it is still considering them, considering them with high import duties. Similarly, there are Indian products like agriculture products for which the export, for which the European Union is not very comfortable about. That is the tariff lines. And uh, what about dispute resolution? Uh, so that I will have to read about. The existing, there is already one existing BTA with uh, Europe, right? 
sir uh, with india india investment treaty is there or so it is undergoing that? negotiations since 2017 okay under which uh, treaty or which international law the cane uh, energy went to <coughs> international dispute settlement forum and uh, got indian assets frozen Uh, so under which treaty? Uh, or which international law? Uh, so that I'll have to read about. Paris only they got this award, right? Yes. Paris court only they gave this award, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. What was it? Uh, heard about this news? Yes, sir. I heard. Uh, of. What is this news? Uh, so actually, uh, the India uh, in 2012 they had come up with uh, the law retribution taxation. So under which the in the in, indirect tran, indirect transfer of the assets uh, before 2012 uh, attracted taxation. So Khan and other companies like Vodafone, so uh, they were sought after by the country for taxation. So they appealed uh, firstly in Indian court and then in the International Arbitration Court there and won the case. So now the India has to. Uh, uh, now the India has to pay around 8,000 crore rupees to Khan Energy and recently new uh, amendment has been uh, brought about in ITF. What was that amendment about? So it is uh, discarding the retribution taxation and it uh, under two conditions. Firstly, it wants the countries to take to withdraw, withdraw the cases. What is tax terrorism? So it is a term uh, wherein the uh, the any state imposes uh, a lot of taxation uh, and uh, try to uh, uh, the tax the taxation the value is uh, the the tax rate is also high and in addition there is a shorter timeline to pay back the uh, taxes. Sure. Sir, so, uh, are you sure? Okay, uh, what are all the options available to India in dealing with uh, Afghan? Uh, so the first option is to, uh, right now, as there is a possibility that Taliban will take over. So firstly, India need to secure its uh, territory in the uh, northern region, northwestern region. Whose territory? So our territory. Do we, do we have some territory there? So not directly in contact uh, with Afghanistan. Hmm. But uh, through Pakistan, uh, terrorists can uh, in infiltrate in the India, in Indian territory. Mm. And sec so, secondly, India need to in uh, have uh, India need to consider the possibility of Taliban taking over and ha has to uh, think about how it can engage with Taliban directly. And thirdly, it should continue its support to the Afghan people through the developmental aids and other kind of support it provides. Mm. So, so, what is your uh, personal? Uh, forecast of events in uh, Afghanistan? So in my opinion, the Afghanistan will take over completely in, uh, in let's say, 30, 30 to 40 days. The timeline uh, is uh, not certain. But it will take over because as a fundamentalist uh, group, so they have nothing to lose. And uh, since uh, 20 years, it, they are fighting to uh, gain uh, the control over Afghanistan. What is the crux of this thing? Why Taliban's are fighting? What is what is their ultimate objective? Uh, sir, uh, firstly, they have the ideology of Islamist nation, so they want that through the various customs and tradition of Islam, uh, it should these customs should prevail in the nation, and they consider the uh, current regime to be a puppet uh, under foreign uh, uh, foreign nations. So they they don't legitimize it, and they want to have their own control there. Last question: You have done uh, your graduation in civil engineering in IIT, and you are doing good research in uh, on foreign university also. But uh, uh, my opinion, you'll have a bright future outside the government. Why do you want to come to government? Uh, sir, uh, I had the inclination towards uh, Indian administrative services. Though in the college, I tried to explore uh, all the uh, available opportunities that I had. Uh, and uh, even in uh, the research, uh, I took interest in it. However, uh, I've, I found that the research that is being conducted here in India is not 
a very rewarding or personally satisfying. Why, why so? So it is because uh, generally, uh, firstly due to lack of fund. For example, uh, I started my independent research while I was in third year, but due to lack of fund, I could not complete it. The second is the availability of lab and equipment, and there is a lot of red tapeism to even uh, access those things. What do you in there? So uh, then uh, I thought to go abroad and I had taken admission. So you are doing two things simultaneously. One is uh, uh, if you enter into the service, you will deprive uh, an opportunity of a generalist, number one. Number two, uh, one IIT degree is wasted. Number three, uh, your foreign research, uh, that uh, slot also goes waste. Okay. Uh, or do you justify your entry into the civil service? Sir, I think the uh, civil services also provides a lot of opportunity to work uh, firstly in the grassroots level and to take the projects which you think that it, they are going, they are directly affecting the people. So uh, the, the kind of satisfaction one can derive from this service uh, is beyond uh, uh, you know, comparison, I would say. So when we, uh, in the name of Allah, we In terms of uh, Umura and uh, I'm talking with respect to the environment, international bodies that have much better skills than others. So, uh, uh, are we as citizens who are actually facing more demand doing justice to uh, Umura with the environment? Uh, and uh, when we talk about the infrastructure development, uh, especially the road construction, so they create a lot of problem to the environment because the way they implement the project, they don't uh, implement it properly. For example, they cut the hill but don't go for the slope stabilization. So it leads to landslide and a lot of loss of life and again the property. So uh, secondly, uh, the the river or the uh, level of water in the streams is also drying up. Uh, this is because of the overpopulation and also during peak seasons of summer, the tourism inflow is very large. So it creates problem for the residents also of the water shortage. And thirdly, uh, as the tourism is not that subs uh, sustainable, uh, so a lot of pollution is also gets uh, generated there. Yes, sir. So there is Kosi River, which is uh, the the main river in the uh, district. So uh, the the water level in the river is uh, decreasing, and uh, apart from that, the as there is no uh, solid waste management uh, system in the hilly areas, so a lot of waste is also gets dumped to these river bodies. Uh, and the most difficult thing would be to construct any uh, reservoir, water reservoir. Uh, firstly, because the uh, the geology is uh, sedimentary rocks, so it is more fragile and it cannot withstand the weight or the shear weight of the if we go for any dam construction. So it is a problem. The other problem is again uh, the road construction and tunneling. But it's already happening. Hmm? It's happening. Yes, when road construction is going on. But you said that you know, this is not a problem which. Uh, you know, yes, ma'am, it is a challenge. So, from the civil engineering perspective, this is challenging. But how do you, uh, you know, address this issue? You know, balancing out the development as well as, you know, maintaining the balance with the environment with the natural balance? <coughs> Uh, and firstly, if we are constructing a road, so in in a hill, there are two sides. One is more uh, prone to get, uh, uh, you know, more to landslide or more destabilized. So we should 
make the uh, alignment in a way that we don't touch that side of the hill. The second thing is in the uh, when we construct the road, there are good methodologies. For example, we can there there are methods to use explosive, but there are uh, there are explosive available which do not do that harm. And then when, uh, when a lot of trees has to be fell down, so afforestation has to be simultaneously done. And lastly, uh, the the roads are built by cutting the hill, so slope stabilization through terrace through terracing retain wall, retaining wall or through gabion walls can be done. Are there any Uh, I'm, I'm not aware. How are you feeling? Mr. Pushkar Singh Dhami. And, uh, what is happening with the politics there? The ordinary elections which are being held there? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma within a year, within this year, uh, there is going to be election. And yeah. What kind of election? Huh? What elections are there? Uh, ma'am, for the state legislature. And change of the scene. Uh, change of scene. Could you just elaborate a little bit the context of it? Uh, uh, firstly, there were internal uh, internal differences within the party of BJP. So the uh, the last to last CM he issued uh, to Who was that? Singh Rawat, okay. Mr. Tirath Singh Rawat. So he he came up with two uh, acts. One is uh, for the uh, the, the religious places uh, management act under uh, in which he undertook the control of the uh, uh, the four uh, four uh, char dhams and other religious places Man management control was taken by the government so the the priest uh, communities and the some of the other uh, people protested against it and the second was uh, uh, he uh, propo he uh, 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 firstly, uh, there was a shift in the capital. So they come up with new capital that is in uh, Garrison. So people again protested against it. So the political figure didn't attract to the people and there was demand to change him. So the next uh, CM came and that CM, uh, I think he, uh, in, in the initial days only, he passed some of the comments which, was, which didn't appeal to the people and they protested again. So then, and also there was a possibility of, uh, as he was not being uh, elected, there was a possibility he would. Uh, okay. Shada, landslides are a new. Landslides. Landslides. Can you tell me about it? Yes, sir. Uh, so, firstly, uh, landslides uh, is the process of uh, the coming down of the uh, earth material. In the slope areas, so the causes uh, are manifold. Firstly, slope gets destabilized during construction. Then, due to heavy uh, downpour of uh, rainfall, uh, uh, the mo the moisture content uh, changes, which also destabilizes the slope. Okay. So, when you construct a hill road, what kind of precautions do you take under these kind of? Uh, so, firstly, the hill slopes has to be stabilized. Second thing, the drainage, uh, the drainage system has to be well developed. Along with the longitudinal drains, there has to be cross drainage in the form of culverts. Uh, and then thirdly, there there can be terracing in the slope so that the uh, the rate of discharge of runoff would be reduced. So it will uh, it will not wash away the soil, the top soil. You worked on the EV vehicle uh, geopositioning in fact. Okay. What lessons that you learned while doing this work can you? Uh, so first thing is that uh, there the inf uh, the uh, electron the electric vehicles uh, the people are more and more aware about it and taking those vehicles and since the the prices were also uh, pr prices there is also not very expensive and secondly uh, the government has two prong approach first is to cater the demand so when a per when a person or an organization demands for having electric vehicle infrastructure so through the private companies, they supply that and also give uh, rebate and some relief on uh, the tariffs. 
The second thing is uh, for the plan orientation to attract more EVs. So the government is installing the infrastructure in the whole in the whole cities. Uh, and so uh, the learning for India is uh, India can also uh, use the approach. Firstly, uh, uh, the city-wide infrastructure planning and uh, has to be done. The government can prepare. So what, what is the average number of EV stations uh, we should have in a particular five plus period? The plans when you implemented geopolitics, what was the density of EV charging stations? Uh, so it would be approximately uh, so the whole uh, this the city where it was planned so it was around uh, 10 square kilometer and there are uh, approximately five to six charging stations. Five to six charging stations for 10 square kilometer. Now uh, parliamentary vista project. How do you look at it as a civil engineer? Uh, so as a civil engineer, uh, as a civil engineer, the project is. Uh, the project is is uh, uh, would uh, bring new uh, kind of infrastructure to the to the country, and as it was also a requirement to expand uh, to as the previous. Any changes in the construction methodology? Any changes in construction methodology? So they are taking care of the earthquake uh, resistant building, and uh, the rest I'll have to read, sir. Now uh, India's relationship with Russia was India's. Uh, sir, uh, prior to 1991, our relationship with Russia was very strong as compared to uh, United States. But now, uh, with United States, our relationship has improved a lot, and there is almost uh, equal terms of relationship. Uh, for with Russia, we have time-tested relationship, and with USA, we are uh, looking for new opportunities to engage. Why do you think our relationship with USA is improving and our uh, relationship with Russia is declining? Uh, Sir, uh, when we talk about the defense deal, so the import from uh, USA has increased. However, with uh, Russia, they have they have almost they have uh, not increased to that extent. Uh, and secondly, there are new uh, avenues to engage uh, with United States, for example, the Quad. Uh, so, uh, however, uh, and with Russia also, we have mechanisms like SCO breaks. So I see that uh, with uh, Russia, the relationship, the relationship uh, are are uh, decent and they are uh, continuing. Uh, but with Russia, with USA, they are increasing. Calisthenic. So what is calisthenic? Uh, so calisthenic is a weight, uh, the weight training wherein we do not use the weights, the equipments. Uh, the resistant weight is provided by our body weight. So the exercises such as push-ups, pull-ups, body ups, and L sets. These all uh, comes under us. Can you mention two, three core body exercises? Yes. So the one is burpee. The other th uh, one is uh, so setups. The third one is uh, mountain uh, mountain running. So uh, reading novels. What do you read? Uh, so I read fiction, mainly dystopian. Dystopian fiction. What do you understand by Kafka? Yes, sir. So I read uh, Metamorphosis. What do you understand by the word Kafka? Uh, Kafka? Uh, the term Kafka? No, sir. Uh, okay. So, sorry, your interview is over.